Today on Better Book Clubs, seven of the best classics for English language learners. Quite a few of my viewers are English language learners, and so I thought it was about time to make a video, especially for them. But if you are not an English language learner, if English is your native language, stick around because you probably do know somebody who's trying to learn English, and this list might be helpful to them. So in putting together this list, I used four basic criteria. The first one is the length of the book. So I tried to choose books that are on the short side so that you can get a sense of accomplishment without having to really slog through a long piece. The second thing is that these books are all very straightforward in structure. They're not doing anything unusual in their plot or the way they're put together. The third thing is that they're not difficult in terms of the prose itself. They don't have a lot of unusual specialized vocabulary, and they don't have a lot of long complex sentences. And the last thing is that they're all part of the canon. So these are books that if you read them, other people will know about them and you'll be able to talk about them with others. First up is the classic novel My Antonia by Willa Cather. This was published in 1918 and it tells the story of a boy from the East who goes out to live with his grandparents in Nebraska and meets an immigrant girl from Bohemia, which is now part of the Czech Republic. It's just a really sweet, gentle story of their friendship and the depth of his feeling for this woman, Antonia. So this is a quite short book and it's um, quite simple, the prose, but it's also beautiful. Although it's not the most famous novel um, of Willa Cather's works, it's often considered to be her greatest novel. Second on my list is Ernest Hemingway. Now, Hemingway's stories tend to have more mature themes than My Antonia does, for example. So that's something to know and be aware of as you're choosing what to read. Hemingway has several famous novels, but I'm gonna recommend his short stories, and in particular, his Nick Adams stories. So Nick Adams is a character that's based on Hemingway himself. He is a veteran of World War I. The style of Hemingway's prose is known for being very simple and straightforward. And in fact, he's one of the early 20th century writers who's really credited with bringing that simple yet beautiful prose style into the realm of American literature. The big Two-Hearted River stories are really very simple also in the fact that they don't really have a plot. So it's really just about this character, Nick, going out and being outside as a kind of meditative healing space for him. They're very internal stories and stories that I think uh, would be great starts for somebody who's practicing English. If you like Hemingway's writing, then of course there's lots more to choose from. First of all, there's this collection of his short fiction, which has a lot of uh, different stories in it, some Nick Adams stories, but a lot of other stories as well. And of course, then there are Hemingway's novels. If you're looking for that same kind of simple prose style, but a little bit more high adventure, you could consider reading Jack London. Now, this book is short already, but it's actually a collection of two of his novels, The Call of the Wild and White Fang, and also a short piece called To Build a Fire. So you can see how short those pieces are. These are pieces that are often assigned to middle school students in the United States. They take place in the Klondike during the Gold Rush period in Canada. Both The Call of the Wild and White Fang are about dogs, a sled dog in one case and a wild dog in another. And so if you like animals, especially if you like reading about animals in the wild, um, Jack London might be a great choice for you. The fourth selection on my list is a little bit of an outsider in the sense that it's 19th century prose. So Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is a very short story um, out of this collection. It's only this many pages, so it's a really pretty short read, but it might be a little bit more difficult in terms of that 19th century vocabulary and sentence structure. So choosing Dickens, a nice short Dickens piece, 
is a great way of working on that more complex sentence structure. A Christmas Carol is such a famous story. It's been told and retold and made into TV shows and movies, and it's a story that pretty much anybody who speaks English, at least in America and the United Kingdom, is going to be familiar with. And so if you read this story, you will be reading into something that's really part of cultural literacy around the celebration of Christmas. Another great choice that sort of loosely connects to Willa Cather is Laura Ingalls Wilder's book Little House in the Big Woods. This takes place in Wisconsin in the early 1870s and it's an autobiographical account of Wilder's childhood. This is the first in a series of books that were later made into a long-running TV show in the United States and again a uh, real cultural touchstone. So many women read these books when they were girls. And again, it's simple sentences and straightforward plots, not difficult vocabulary. They're considered children's books and they have illustrations in them, but they're really well-written, really interesting stories. And again, giving you some sense of this period in American history. If you're interested in learning more about Laura Ingalls Wilder, I have another video on her and I'll link to that in the comments section below. The newest selection on my list, and also one of the longest, is the novel All Creatures Great and Small by James Harriet. This is the pen name for James Alfred White, who was a veterinarian in Yorkshire in England, and he's just telling a lot of stories about being a country veterinarian. So even though this is a long book, it's very episodic. It doesn't really have a plot that you have to follow carefully. So you could read this book over the course of a long time, one little chapter at a time. You don't have to read the whole book at once necessarily, which is why I chose it. Because even though it's long, the stories are really interesting and fun to follow, and the writing is very readable. Again, a lot of people will be familiar with these stories because they've been told and retold and made into into uh, TV shows and I think even a movie. It's one, again, in a series. If you really like it, there are some other books that you could read as well. And finally, maybe the most famous book of all of the books that I've recommended, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This book came out in 1960 and I would venture to say that every, almost every American has, if not read it, been assigned to read it in school. It's been a classic for generations. I put this book on the list even though it's pretty long. It's very readable, there's not a lot of difficult vocabulary, and the story is so famous that you might even be familiar with it already, which would make it easier to actually sit down and read. It also gives you a really interesting window into Americans' view of race. In order to flesh out that view, once you've read the novel, you might also want to Google what happened when Harper Lee's second novel, Posthumously, was published in 2015. Go Set a Wild Watchmen was actually a version of the first draft of To Kill a Mockingbird, and it takes a very different approach to questions of race. If you read through some of the commentary online, you'll get a really fuller picture of um, issues of race, in particularly in the South, which is where Harper Lee lived and where this story takes place. So those are my top seven picks for classic novels that I think would be a great start for English language learners. If you're learning English and you're looking for some novels to read that are both interesting and accessible to you, then these would all be great starting points. I'll list the titles and authors in the comments section below. If you are someone who's trying out these books as a reader of English as a second or third or fourth language, let me know what you think, whether these were good suggestions or not and why. In the meantime, if you like what you see here, please subscribe and I'll be back soon with another episode of Better Book Clubs.